Hi, Misha here, and a few months ago, did a video, very impromptu, looking at AK van ads. And in that, we talked about a couple of Polish bayonets for the Kalashnikov, the AK. Originally, Poland produced the Type 1 AK-47 bayonet, but they were a little unique. For one, they had kind of a unique blade structure and a very unique scabbard without the flange and the removable leather hanger. But that double ring design would only fit the original Kalashnikov. When the AKM was adopted in 1939 in Russia and 1966 in Poland, Poland would have to switch to manufacturing a variant of the AKM bayonet. Again, very similar to the Russian. It's kind of a hybrid of the Type 1, Type 2 AKM. It has the metal pommel here, synthetic grip, and it uses the older metal scabbard with rubber insulator. Interestingly, the blade itself, shaped the same as the Russian, lacks the serrations, the saw teeth on the side. So it's actually very easy to tell Polish apart besides the uh, Circle 11. Today, in this video, I want to talk about another unique Polish bayonet. This one here on my tantal. This is the WZ85 training bayonet. Just for YouTube, this is not a switchblade, an automatic knife. It is, strictly speaking, a non-lethal training device for soldiers to learn how to, well, use a bayonet, bayonet practice. And while it will fit on a standard rifle, a KM, or a Tantal, or even a Burrell, it was often put on a dummy rifle, kind of analogous to an American rubber duck. And actually no parts in this, aside from maybe the latch back here, the internals here, are the same as on the AKM style. This is a wholly unique design and pretty uncommon in America, but they produced a lot of these between 1985 and 1988, maybe into 89, with a modern run beginning in 2006. So, yeah, what do we have here? Aside from maybe something fun to do at Halloween. Well, let's uh, pull it off here. It's a little tight on this rifle. And take a closer look. So here the WZ-85 training bayonet is next to the standard AKM. Again, this is a hybrid of a Type 1 and Type 2 AKM. This one doesn't have the strap, but it would normally like this does. Starting from the back, they both have metal pommels with a very similar latch system. They have synthetic grips. With the 85s, these can range from orange to red to brown. They're a different type of grip. They're not interchangeable with these. Different attachment points. This one uses screws. They look the same, but they work differently. Likewise, the ring system here is totally different, not interchangeable. And of course, the blade is absolutely not of the same. Leave it up to the Polish to make an over-engineered training device. But it is pretty cool, and it does have the same size and weight and just general feel of a real bayonet, but in no way is lethal. So, yeah, just seemed like an interesting topic for a video.
Let's talk about a few other interesting little features. So as you see, this is spring loaded. We have a rubber collar so that when it goes in, that hits up against something to keep the metal from actually damaging a person or an object. And then of course we have this rubber tip. These parts are easily removable and replaceable because they will get broken, chipped, worn out in use. So they're meant to be wear parts. And they're essentially made using the same basic technology as on the insulator on the scabbard. Of course, this bayonet does not need a scabbard because it retracts in. Notice the notch on the simulated blade. Keep in mind this is in no way a blade, no edge, and it's not made from hardened steel. It's a regular kind of pot metal. We do have a catch back here. Notice you can't really push it in when the blade is out. Push it in and lock. There we go. Because of this, we have an additional attachment here. It's fattened up. I don't know. I guess it does use the same strap, you know? But overall, kinda, kinda neat, you know? This rubber can be black, gray, even white. And hey, good for training. <laughs> Quite fun. I've wanted to pick one of these up for a long time, but just never, never have before. They're at a few websites, but often very expensive. So you had to wait for them to go on sale. Yeah. So what do you think? Basically, constructed assembled using the same technology as the other bayonets and even material like on the handguard here, but wholly unique. Uh, finish can be much like with the Tantals, either kind of a matte blue or a black paint or a mix of both. So you see a lot of the same features on these as you would the rifles. Again, standard AKM AK-74 lug. And these were in use for decades. First with the AKM, AKMS, then the Tantal, WZ-88, and most recently the Burial, the WZ-96. <laughs> and since it's a trainer, not really much history to talk about. I wish I had one of the dummy rifles to show you, but hey, at least I have a bayonet, or faux bayonet, simulated bayonet, if you will. And from the beginning, Polish stuff was always pretty, uh, pretty unique. And that's all I have to say about that, really. If you're interested in the rifles, of course, I've covered these in multiple past videos. I have a thing for Polish guns. And as I said at the beginning, or at least recently did a video looking at the generations and many of the variants, not all of them, but many of the AK Bayonet series. But something I've been eyeing for a few years and uh, glad I finally picked one up before they disappear forever, like Surplus does. This one seems in quite nice shape. You never know about training stuff. It's either really mint condition or it's beat to crap. It seems like there's very little in between, not just with Polish, but any. I've seen these on a few websites. And I know there are people that collect entire variations, and I know there are tons of them. The uh, NR serials, the ML, which are the newer ones, serials, different colorations of rubber grip, a few different locations for attachments and rivets and stuff, but I'm not into them that much. Just it would kind of finish out a Polish collection. And hey, it matches my Tantal's lower handguard quite well. At least to me, who can't even see it. So you can let me know if I'm right or wrong. With that, 
As always, I greatly appreciate you hanging out with me. And see, I can do a short-ish video. I think I could, somewhat. If you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel as we move into spring and summer of 2022, please check out the link to the Patreon page. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.